Hi, I'm Brian Puryear, tutoring high school chemistry. Today's topic is nuclear chem. Nowadays, when we say nuclear, we tend to think of big explosions and cities disappearing in flashes of light. Well, not completely so. Nuclear medicine, for instance, is one of those good applications. You can do radio imaging using that and actually look into someone without having to cut them open, which is a big advantage. And it's covered in high school chemistry, so let's go. There are two types of nuclear reactions, fissions and fusions. Fissions are when atoms break up and fusions are when they get together. And then three different types of radiation can occur in a nuclear chemistry reaction. You might not see all three at once, but you'll probably see one of these in a few reactions. The first one is the alpha particle. The alpha particle is just a helium nucleus, two protons, two neutrons, only no electrons circling it. Then there's a beta particle. A beta particle is just an electron, but not any normal kind of electron. A beta particle is an electron from the nucleus. See, a neutron can break up and form a proton and a beta particle. A neutron is effectively a beta particle plus a proton. The negative charge on the electron cancels out the positive charge on the proton for zero total charge. The last thing is gamma radiation. That's this funny looking symbol that looks like a Y. You tend not to write these into the chemical equation because it's just energy. So let's head over to one of those equations right now. Here we have uranium being hit by a neutron and breaking up into bromine, two neutrons, and something else. This is the kind of reaction you'll see in pretty much nu all nuclear reactors and high school chemistry textbooks. So let's get to breaking this down. In nuclear chemical equations, you just need to remember one thing. Make sure all your numbers add up. That means atomic weight and atomic number. On top here, this number 235 is the atomic weight. Make sure it's the same for one side of the equation as the other side. So here we have 235 and 1 from the neutron, for a total of 236 on the atomic weight. Let's head over to the other side. We have an 80 from the bromine and 2 neutrons, so 2 times 1 is 2, for a total of 82 on the weight. Using that, we can find out the weight of our unknown substance. But let's keep going and fix up atomic number first. Here we have 92 protons and no protons from your neutron, so 92 total over here. Over on this side, we have 35 from bromine, none from the neutron, so just 35. Now, we just need to subtract. 236 minus 82, and 92 minus 35. Doing that all out will give us an atomic weight of 154, and atomic number of 57. Remember that atomic number determines your element. So atomic number 57 on the periodic table is lanthanum. And so we can just get rid of our question mark and write our numbers in. Remember, you will need to write the atomic weight because of isotopes. Isotopes have different numbers of neutrons, so different atomic weights, and you'll need to be exact. But aside from that, that's all you need to know. To recap, there are two types of nuclear reactions. Fissions, where atoms break up, and fusions, where they get back together. There are three types of radiations. Alpha particles, which are just helium nuclei, beta particles, which are electrons from the nucleus, and gamma radiation, which is just energy. You won't see this in the reaction. When you're working with nuclear chemical reactions, make sure that all your numbers add up. Your total atomic weight on one side is the same on the other. Your total atomic number on one side is the same as the other, and you can use that to determine your unknown substance. That's all for now. Again, I'm Brian Pierce. See you next time.